Я люблю всех живот. Я люблю горю. Wild animals live all around us. Sometimes deep in the wilderness. But often alongside people. In the countryside. Suburban gardens. Even city streets and skyscrapers. So what does it mean to be wild? These lion cubs live in the grasslands of Africa. These young tigers live in the jungles of India. And this pet kitten lives with her human family. Although all these animals look similar, the lions and tigers are wild animals. This cat is not. Like a dog, she's a pet or domestic animal. She's not wild. In many important ways, all animals, including humans, are alike. Just like you, every animal needs food and water. They need places to live that provide the right kind of shelter. This tree is home to a robin family. It provides shade from the sun, a place to find bugs to eat, and a safe place to build a nest and raise chicks. All animals need space to move around. Whether that means roaming across an African plain, or your dogs walk around a local park. But there are also some big differences between wild and domestic animals. Wild animals don't need people to take care of them. They can find their own food and water. They can locate, even build, their own homes. These are owls, called burrowing owls, because of their special homes. They live in empty prairie dog burrows. While the mother is out finding food, the young chicks explore outside of their home. But when a coyote pack comes sniffing around, they sound the alarm. And escape underground. The shelter is a safe place to raise their family. It is the perfect home for these wild animals. Some wild animals are social. These Japanese snow monkeys live in large family groups called troops. In the winter, the troop crowds into hot springs to warm up. Other animals, like this boa constrictor, prefer to live alone. Whether social or solitary, in the wild, these animals are free to choose to live in a way that's right for their particular needs. But domestic animals, like your cat or dog, are different. They rely on people to meet their needs. They need us to feed them, to give them water, to provide exercise, shelter, and companionship. 
Every wild animal has a particular kind of natural home that suits him best. This is called his habitat. A shark's habitat is underwater. Their bodies are streamlined for swimming, fast. With fins for balance, the fastest shark in the world can go about 50 miles, or 80 kilometers per hour. The jungles of South America are home to a cool looking reptile. This guy is a green iguana. He spends most of his time basking in the sun and hanging out in trees. Using sharp teeth to eat the leaves, flowers, and fruits that iguanas need to be healthy. He's got lots of special characteristics that make this environment the best home for green iguanas. Sharp claws and long fingers make tree climbing easy. And a really long tail helps him balance, even at the very top of the trees. The higher the better, to soak up the heat of the sun. He even sleeps up there. His handy tail may not be moving now, but predators beware. When threatened, he will swing it like a whip. Spines along his back are another line of defense. Iguanas often live near water and are excellent swimmers. When in danger, they can leap from a branch and escape with a splash to the water below. This wild habitat is where he is most at home, and it's the best home he can have. Do you think wild animals make good pets? Do you think a bird that flies many miles a day or a tiger that needs a huge area of land to roam, will thrive in your house or a cage? Elephants drink lots of water. If you had an elephant, you'd have to fetch him 150 big bottles of water every day. You'd have to make about 1,000 sandwiches for his lunch. And sandwiches are not even good for elephants. Could he shower in your bath? or sleep in your bed? Clearly, this wild animal does not make a good pet. People shouldn't keep wild animals as pets. Los animales en vez de no son mascotas. Stop buying and stop selling. Thank you. So how should we live alongside wild animals? With the butterflies or birds feeding in your garden? With the squirrels hiding acorns in your backyard? with the monkeys you may see on the walk to school. It's okay to be curious <gasps> and amazed. But from a distance. Show respect to wild animals and stay safe. <laughs> be aware and take care. Sometimes, when a wild animal is in trouble, it may be the right thing for people to step in and help. But only adults with special training. These are orphaned bear cubs that have lost their mothers. These specialists know exactly how to care for the bears because they are too young to live on their own in the wild. When the babies grow up and learn wild bear skills, they're ready to go back home, to the forest. The researchers here, they take very good care that those bears don't get used to people. So those bears can actually live afterwards a free wild bear type life. Wild animals should stay in the wild. Wild animals belong to the wild. What is wildlife trade? Wild
wild animals are facing some big problems. They are losing their natural homes as human populations grow. But they also face another problem. Some people are killing or capturing wild animals from their natural homes. They are selling the animals, alive or dead, as wildlife products. This is known as wildlife trade. Recently, a woman arrived at an airport in Russia. When customs officers looked inside her suitcase, they got the surprise of their lives. It was stuffed with 108 living animals. The animals were captured and sold to the woman in Indonesia. She stuffed them in tiny bags in her luggage with no room to move, no food or water, and brought them almost 6,000 miles from their home. Officers found snakes, turtles, several primates called slow lorises, and a silvery gibbon. They were to be sold as exotic pets in Europe. How do you think this guy felt stuffed in a suitcase on the terrifying journey? Once sold to a pet owner, the scared animals might scratch or bite. Ow! They might be carrying germs or a disease that can infect the animals and people they come in contact with. The people that are buying wild animals are called consumers. Sometimes consumers buy living wild animals or sometimes they purchase products made from wild animals and their body parts. These wild animal products are sold all around the world, in souvenir stands, at markets, in big city shops. People use these products for a lot of different reasons, sometimes for food or medicine, but often for luxuries like jewelry, clothes, trinkets and decorations. We can easily get along without these animal products. But without their body parts? Wild animals cannot survive in the wild. It's not cool to kill wildlife for products people don't even need. They are not fashion. They are not medicine. Tusks belong to elephants. Horn belongs to rhinos. Shells belong to turtles. Fens belong to sharks. And wild animals belong in the wild. All over the world, thousands, even millions of individual animals are in danger from wildlife trade. And entire species are threatened with extinction. The animals left behind suffer too. Like parrots who may lose their lifelong mate. Or bear cubs and other young animals who can't survive on their own. This is Musulole. He's a three-year-old baby elephant. Most of the elephants that we find orphaned in Zambia are as a result of poaching. He was separated from his mother by poachers, involved in the wildlife trade. If the calf is less than two years old, it can't survive without its mother's milk, and so it becomes an orphan. Now, he lives in a very special orphanage. It's an orphanage for elephants in the country of Zambia in southern Africa. Without a family, Muso could not survive on his own. Now, he needs specially trained people to be his mother. When he's ready, he will be released back to the wild to find a new family. It is important to keep wild animals like Muso living in his wild habitat, because every animal plays an important role in the ecosystem where they live. On the African savanna, elephants weed out trees, creating grassland for other animals. They also scatter seeds from the plants they eat, often hidden in their dung. 
Each package the elephant leaves behind nurtures new life. They are considered the architects of the savanna, but they're also the gardeners of the forest. There's something like 36 or 37 incredibly important hardwoods in the Central African rainforests that can only propagate if, if the seed has gone through an elephant. So it is very important for animals, like Muso, to go back to the wild. Because they're important for the ecosystem. All kinds of life forms makes a better environment for the earth. It's like a scale. If you take away one of them, then the whole scale topples over. If a bee dies, then the flowers will die, and then the sheep will die, then the fox will die. Then the world would just be a miserable place. It's just going to be a Stop and think. Is that a good idea? Or a bad one? So how do we protect wild animals from illegal trade? National laws and international agreements aim to help ensure that trade in wild animals does not threaten their survival. But in many places, stronger laws are needed, and existing ones need to be better enforced. Out here, on the front lines of wildlife trade, rangers protect animals from poachers. New high-tech tools, like drones, are helping patrol protected wildlife habitat. Other animals are helping too. Sniffer dogs with super sensitive noses help track poachers or sniff out wildlife products smuggled in vehicles. As consumers, we can all do our part as well to help sniff out and stop the trade in wildlife. We should stop selling animals and the body parts. I don't want to buy souvenirs. If we don't buy, they won't die. If we don't buy, then they don't die. Thank you.